Um, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining this seminar. I am Navita Disfan. I am the territory manager for NanoVacuum, looking after uh, New South Wales, Queensland, and ACT. So today we have a speaker from Aspects Germany, uh, Dr. Dylan Langenberg, and we will have a seminar on routine operando studies with near ambient pressure XPS. I will quickly like to introduce our speaker today. Dr. Dilla Langenberg earned his PhD in chemistry with an emphasis on material science research from Ruhr University Bochum. He focused on the synthesis, characterization, and development, strengthening, and catalysis. After that, he worked for Oxford Instruments on Micro Nanotechnology in Germany. After receiving his PhD, then he worked with a, a research institute called the Institute of Quantum Computing in Canada as a senior research scientist and manager where he managed uh, many cutting edge technologies, uh, focusing on surface science, then uh, deposition system like molecular beam epidexy and spectroscopy technique like, uh, such as uh, ARPES. Then he joined SPECS where he's contributing with his uh, knowledge of surface science. He is uh, working as a regional manager, looking after um, Asia, Asia Pacific and the Arabian Peninsula. I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Dila Langenberg from SPECS. Thank you for joining my seminar. Um, please let me know if uh, I am muted or not, because I see everything fine. I couldn't hear anything. I'm trying to share my screen and uh, we'll be talking uh, forward. So which one is the right one? Share. Am I sharing the right screen? I hope so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so uh, my sound is fine. Can you hear me, anybody? Check, just yes, no? David, my sound? Yes, we yes, can it, hear you. Yes, we can hear you. All we good. can hear you. Okay, yes. thank you. So, uh, I don't need to introduce myself. Maybe did already the job. <clears throat> um, I'd like to talk about some routine operandi studies uh, with the NAP, or let's say near ambient project space. <clears throat> That's the new technique, uh, which differs from the um, standard UHV experience, as you may know, and uh, our specs uh, company, which is based in Berlin, Germany, uh, and our representatives are the Nanovacuum in Australia. Uh, we started with this uh, kind of the uh, near ambient pressure experiments into 2015, and since then we are developing pretty well and covering over 63 the groups. Uh, they have that here. You will see why it's really so interesting, why it's so cool to have a near ambient pressure experience instead of a classical experience UHV. So the company, I will not go through everything here, but should just try to give you some points here. And I will be flying a lot of uh, slides in case you want to go back to something, let me know. You can chat uh, or you can uh, ask, uh, put your questions together. So the company established 1983. And then we took over some labels. Uh, let me please activate my, the mouse here. Uh, the point laser, okay. The labeled, labeled company is known to a lot of you guys here. Then it went through different steps, taking off uh, different groups, companies like Nanonis is famous due to for the SPM. And then uh, 2015, we started the Enviro SK, which is called the Ambient Pressure uh, Measurement XPS. And then um, the this year we introduced another kind of the environmentals. It's similar near ambient pressure based experiment uh, device system, and then we also introduced the UV source and ADC here. We have about 160 people in Berlin. All the everything. This is the only the main difference to other companies. Specs really everything built in the same house from the AG Electronic Company there from 1800 something. Yeah, it means the. Um, the component will be built on the fifth floor. Then we have the development for the software, IND, all on the third floor. And then we have the main production here. I mean, anything which happens with the system will be uh, internally discussed and then re-approved and then the software adapted. Let's say in case uh, you have a system and you want 10 years later to upgrade to something different, we have the code. We uh, we, we can update that uh, accordingly. In compared to some other groups where they have to talk to different groups, they have to ask the library, the software, and then 
uh, like that. Yeah, this is really what thing what I'm really proud about uh, the Specs product here. It's all in one. Um, the portfolio, as you see, we are providing different kind of, uh, let's say, covering different range of uh, what's needed for the research, like all the related to the XPS uh, instrument. There's some related microscopy. There are some also sample preparation, all of, uh, also different kind of the systems like uh, um, uh, what's called a new normal, uh, or let's say a standard uh, research instrument based or full automated for the service labs or the uh, uh, what's called uh, like um, automatization industry. So I'll be going to this point just quick and then uh, you let me know when something needs to be clarified more. This is the this page is telling you about the basic XPS as all of you know uh, hopefully and XPS is about uh, having an X-ray source hitting the surface here and then impinging some uh, photoelectrons out and they have certain energy, they will be reaching the analyzer and then going through the certain uh, electrical field. And at the end, you will analyze based the energy and you get a spectrum like that. Here, this is from, for example, silicon 2P. So uh, basically uh, an, an XPS, which has mainly the aluminum K alpha, the energy range is about 1.5 keV. And based on that, it will be from the top zero up to three nanometer depth uh, and to the sample, it means you are getting really only the first few nanometer information. So this 10, it means if you are changing this to something like a chromium uh, K-alpha or a silver, then you have a bit more depth than that one. For people with the, at the synchrotron, if they have 15, they may be going up to 30 nanometers, something like that, yeah. So, but this is why also um, XPS is really like a fingerprint of elements here. It could tell us you all the chemical composition, tells you the electronic configuration, and then uh, the neighboring, the charge effects, and et cetera, like that here. Um, yeah, this is typical, and this is uh, mainly uh, for the ultra-high vacuum condition. As I said, the classical XPS. So... Why people are now interested more in a hybrid one? Let's say hybrid means, let's say, why they are they want to have uh, more than just UHV experience because uh, there's more demands here, because there are demands in the thin film uh, analysis here, where people grow something like a spintronic, they want to really to trace back the layers, how thick are the layers, what the materials are here. Imagine if you have a beam like a uh, uh, let's say a 30, 300 micrometer, and then you can, it mean you can map your surface up to a few hundred micrometer in spectroscopically, like you call XPS mapping, and then you spatter it, or you can pick, uh, you can follow up, trace back all of this in different ways. So you will see a few pages somewhere at the end. Um, surface mapping here. Some people like it will be more to see, okay, what's going on on top here. So there are some people asking from, uh, microscopies. This is something like PIM, something like the ARPAS, and this is an insulator for the XPS here. And then people are also requiring uh, larger wafer samples here, and 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 all like that, and all optimization here. And uh, the people all of this, let's say in general, like uh, let's say um, this people that that they have really uh, problems with the uh, UHV XPS here. So and even that one here. And that's why we need to find a better way to serve the others. So here shows you the difference between the um, NAP and the UHV XPS. So the UHV XPS, <clears throat> which means you are really measuring mainly the model system. So if the sample is very clean, prepared, spattered, or heated up, flushed, whatever, and that's also in a UHV condition here. So, and that's extreme clean here, but in reality, that's what you have. In the reality, you have some particles lying somewhere in the liquid and whatever the other, say like, like, like the battery, like the biological sample, like whatever you have, um, bacteria, and they are also uh, in, in our normal, normal environmental pressure, like one bar, as you see that here. Uh, these are two different ways. We cannot compare one to one here, but what about the people who, want to work on gas, liquid, biology, and other related to environmental conditions here. So in order to do that, we have to overcome some information like that one here. 
so the pressure, the material. So, so the embryonic pressure uh, express is a standard express, starts with the beam. Then you are uh, extracting some photo electrons. This are, they have certain energies. Uh, when they leave the sample, they, you create a positive charge. Here. This is why you have them charging on the insulator or semiconductors, um, not weak conductors, they say right now here. And then in the near emit pressure, you have gases here lying around everywhere. These gases will be uh, initially neutral. And then when they come in contact with the X-ray, so there will be also some ionized. You have some free electrons. These free electrons will be replacing or neutralizing this positive charge which you created during the X-ray. And this is how you are neutralizing that uh, the sample here. This is why you will not have any charge effect on the surface in the near ambient pressure measurement, whereas in the XPS you have to have instead this electron uh, electrons coming from the gas here, uh, like a charge neutralizer, which call also by some people a uh, flood gun. The flood gun will be feeding the surface with electrons here. So um, a common mistake from by other a lot of people they think sorry this has to be down the two. A lot of people, they think, oh, in the near emit pressure measurement will give me different resolution, which is totally irre irrelevant, because if you look at here, this is UHV condition, uh, power of the X-ray, two-minute measurement of the uh, silver 3D, and uh, the resolution is 0.8. And you see there's no nitrogen here in the range, and there's the two peaks for that one here is kinetic energy. So now we add it here, like look there, 10 millibar nitrogen, same power, same time, same acquisition. And then you see that we uh, have nitrogen here, the peak here from the gas. And the same thing you see also the two peaks from the 3D is also 0.8 evolved. It means the resolution is really exactly the same. This didn't affect a lot. So now we are going to higher pressure here, 0.2 to 25. The same thing, we have higher nitrogen ratio compared to here based on the pressure. Uh, you can also calculate the area here, and then you will know the amount of the nitrogen absorbed on the surface here. This is really there. And then uh, we have also the, resol the resolution of both peaks here. What you see from here, from here to here to here, if you look at the intensity, the intensity changed only. And that's very clear point. You will see that why. Uh, I'm giving you some uh, motivations here just to see... Um, why we why would the companies or, uh, or people requiring for that why companies try to do some uh, r and d on the near ambient pressure measurement this one is a is a carbon peak of the let's say uh, it's its growth of the uh, carbon peak on a sample here let's say you can have any sample so in this case we have a nickel on top and then this could be also the contamination uh, flow grow with the time for some people so as you see here, it's about the delta spectra between each of them is like that. The acquisition time is one second. This is a snapshot measurement. It means your energy window is from here to here is about, and then you can see the spectrum, spectrum, and that's the intensity. And you see how, how the, 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 the carbon grows at one millibar at this time difference uh, here. So, that's here. Um, that's something really nice. And you see also there's another kind of the carbon growing with the time, then changing on this one here. Anyway, this is very nice thing about the uh, in situ experiment for gases. Same thing here. Some people are interested in to do nitrogen on the gold. So this is for some, I honestly um, don't know for what kind of the experiment, but we have uh, platinum palladium here, so something. Um, what you see here is the 3D peak in the UHV, and then also one milliver nitrogen, and then this is then the PD, this is the uh, the 4F and the platinum, and then this is the carbon, this is the oxygen, all the peaks here compared. Um, then again, some people uh, are interested in oxidation, in situ oxidation, as you see uh, here, uh, these are two conditions, two peaks at two different pressures. This is 1.5 millibar, this UHV, and then uh, we have the same at two different temperatures, here, two millibar, and then temperature here, and then in this one, you have it at the uh, 700 <clears throat> 2200 
degrees Celsius here at one millibar or two millibar. So the nice thing in this one here, if you just know about the XPS, uh, UHV XPS, at this temperature, it's really not possible to do any UHV XPS. Uh, it's the electrons are scattered and the uh, the heating is pretty strong. You will not see almost uh, a, a single signal here. This one's something also done experiment from people at the synchrotron. So where they measured the uh, the iron, nephron, and platinum uh, sample uh, at different vent pressure. And what you see here is there, they use different energy at the synchrotron first. And also they try to measure at different pressures of water here. So you see 0.5, the color 0.5, 1, 10, 10 millibar. And the, uh, the last one also, the changing the energy. That's the cool thing about the in situ experiment is where you can play with different parameters. You can play with the temperature, you can play with the gas, you can play synchrotron, they can play even with the energy. And in case you have uh, one type of the Omicron system, uh, sorry, one type of the metros or the ESCA, uh, the metros has three sources where you can change the sources follow the same here. Uh, uh, let's say peak size here. Uh, we'll show you something at the end also. So again, the same thing here measured at the same period, different uh, energy, pretty nice experiment. And uh, that's, uh, they've been used at 300 micrometer nozzle size. Okay, applications really is possible, all of this here. We put this, all of this here because we got samples from all of these companies uh, to see uh, the condition with the, uh, with the Niambia pressure experiment. So, now, again, uh, to uh, put it together, it's useful really for the environmental science, soil and atmospheric, chemistry, physics, catalysis, different pressures, biology, um, liquid, wet, electrochemistry, in situ, combined with ALD, PLD, all of this which is, we are not really possible with the UHV can, uh, XPS. This one is a nice paper about the combustion engine what will happen internally. And this has been published on this uh, paper. It's pretty nice. And that's the cool thing about that. Yes, it's really, well, some of you know probably about the mass spectrometer where you pick a, a mass, one mass, and then you want to see how the intensity of the mass changing with the time here. Here is our system. You can pick a signal of any, any element, and then you follow that signal changing with the time here. As you see from here, argon, but I don't know what's the different stuff here. But at the same time, you can also do uh, uh, take a range of the peaks. It means you are following different elements with the time here. So this, you have the energy window here, where this within this energy window, you can see all this energy, all the elements here. So it means you can do different elements at the time, different temperature, or many elements uh, at different pressure, different temperatures. Everything is possible. That's the nice thing about it. That's really what's called in situ here. So, um, yeah, and that's, as we say, it is pretty useful for the environmental experiment people. This one is some people who are interested on a solid liquid interface or gas solid interface. It's also possible for mainly for the corrosion people and uh, because uh, the materials undergo different change with different conditions. Yeah, in, in the UHV condition, the people will be uh, doing, putting, let's say, inserting this in the liquid and then taking this out. They have to be dried extremely so you don't change the UHV condition and then you put inside the sample here. It's mean you are changing the environment completely. In this case, this is what you see from this, the analyzer, uh, uh, nozzle and like that one, the same is the analyzer. And this is the sample. This is the manipulator, the white one, that one. The manipulator, one piece they added, this is the this is metal here. And it goes into the uh, uh, catalytic um, uh, electrolytes. And then you can measure the interfaces where there's nothing, where there's some liquid, and, and so on here. So, pretty nice thing, mainly, let's say people need this in the past. Uh, uh, for the battery research and now it's possible. Um, the same thing here is also published pretty nicely on the corrosion chemistry volume there. And you can, for example, pick different peaks here, like say, or the in, involved in the corrosion, like the oxygen 
This is the right area, how that looks like, what kind of oxygen. Then you have the other one, it's shifted by about four evil to different area. Then if you uh, immerse and then adding some voltage, this is what's inter interesting about the in situ battery. See, you have plus six voltage and it's shifted back in another direction. It means the reaction will be different during the operandi measurement rather than not doing it. In the past, in the, let's say, in the UHP express, maximum was possible to do this too. Maximum here, and this one, you would have also a lot of pressure changing. That was not possible in the liquid here. So now you see the difference adding here. The same thing here. This is what's possible. This was mm, medium, not possible, maybe, conditionally. And this one, it was absolutely not possible. This is the new research. Again, the new research. That's really something can bring more publications out. So the difference between both here, as I explained you once uh, at the beginning, you have more gases here that are interfering here. This gas will affect also negatively on the signal. You have to say this to analyze the nozzle. You are distracting a lot of electrons and all the other sizes. Photoelectrons will not reach it. It means the intensity will go lower. So, and we, it's not only switching, adding gas to vacuum, it doesn't work. You have to have to overcome some problems and issues here. So this one is in the analyzer, uh, as a side cut. And normally the analyzer ends here, this is there. So you don't have these two pumps. You have either one of them or you have one pump somewhere here. That's a UHP analyzer. Whereas this one is a NAP analyzer. If we think about NAP near ambient pressure measurement, let's say this is the sample and you have here, that one, 50 millibar, let's say uh, up to 50 millibar, up to one bar, you have the pressure here. And then you have to go to 10 to minus 10 inside here. So you have to overcome the gap here. And that's what we did. We have an, an extra chamber here. We have a giant pump here. And then we have the nozzle size here. The nozzle size is 300 micrometer. It means the pumping, the pressure changing, the pumping through here, the, this is the pressure of the gas through here, the pumping through out has to be calibrated to exactly so that you have the UHV here. Because we know if we have several kilovolt on here, up to 15 kilovolt can be uh, added to the uh, plates on the, in the analyzer, uh, they will be discharged if you have no uh, high vacuum here. So, and again, we have the second pump here just to do that here. The nice thing also, we have a valve here. It means once you are working on your sample, preparing the sample or whatever changing the condition here, you can close this valve without changing anything in the nature of the UHV here, because there are still two pumps. It means you are never venting the analyzer. This is the nice thing about it. So again, to the 300 millimeter as to, to overcome the NAP to the UHV, sure, you can go to, uh, instead of 50 millibar, you can go one, two bar, but you have to compensate the pumping in and out. Let's say pushing in, pumping out here. It means if you go smaller, the pump either has to be stronger, this one, and then if you make the nozzle smaller, it means less photoelectrons go in. It means you have less intensity. This is why there must be a balance, a trade-off that's the trait of 300 micron, 50 millibar, working ideal. You don't have signal loss, and you'll see a loss. Again, here, the, uh, the working distance. The analyzer and the near ambient pressure measurement is very close to the sample because you don't want that electrons get scattered, the scatter all your photo electrons here. They have to go in. Like if you go, if you look at here, it has to be as close as possible so everyone can reach in. Otherwise, they will be scattered like this here. Then uh, we have also added uh, another point, uh, the the acceptance angle, like that one here. It's just a view. Acceptance angle at the, it's just an, an, an idea to compare. It's this, uh, it, in the UHV express, you have plus minus 15 degree. In the NAP, you have plus minus 22, two plus minus 30. Our new instrument has plus minus 30 degree, and that's, nobody has that right now. So, and if you have bigger acceptance angle, you are getting more uh, electrons going in. This is how you overcome the intensity because this point is very important. So you need enough intensity, enough photon density in order to get signal. So, and plus a lot of the, the, the what's called the, the lenses has to be 
uh, working at different pressure, but uh, to you shortly, this is, stays always under UHP and then here's the pumping. Okay, so there are different options for the near ambient pressure system. There are some people are interested in the C2 cell, like in the XPS uh, nap at, with the gases. So these are back feeling, it's just like um, you are venting, yeah, let's say, you are bringing the entire system in the ambient pressure condition, whereas here you are adding your in situ cell here. This could be for gases, it could be for the liquid, and then there are some people who want to have the nap uh, at the synchrotron exchange of the system, and then uh, the other groups who are interested in fully automated for the service labs in the industry. So uh, this is our newest instrument, which we uh, published last month at the IBS in the US. So this one is pretty cool. This really uh, highly developed. There is not a single competitor to the current instrument that we have here. If you look at the X-ray source here, uh, you remember I showed you, I told you at the beginning that the experts will give you information about one, uh, let's say a few nanometers, just top here, because in general we are using the aluminum K-alpha. But in this one, you can switch between aluminum to silver to chrome here. You don't need to have all three. You can have only this one. But anytime it's upgradable to any of this here without changing the system. Uh, <clears throat> so, and and if you, let's say, with aluminum, if you have one to three nanometer, with chrome, you will have up to 10 nanometer. It means we're going deeper into the system here. Also, pretty nice thing. This is also special here. We have the X-ray source, the the... the uh, the diameter of the of the spot is 100 micron. Minimum, it can go also up to millimeter if you want to cover more materials here. So in the past, um, typical XPS, they are pretty seven millimeter. But the good thing, it's not only about the spot size of the uh, of the X-ray, it was also about the spot size of the analyzer. They have to overlap in the same ways that you that you are catching the entire electrons reflected from sample. That's how you get the maximum intensity. So it doesn't help if you have one micron spot here and then you have 300 micron analyzer. So reverse here. So there is some uh, calculation to be based here with the maximum intensity. And this is what we fitted exactly here, uh, 300 to 100. So you can have different kind of electron sources here for the uh, UPS, for the reverse UPS, and then you have reels can be added, AES can be added. SEM, SAM can be all added. You can add also UPS uh, possible for the UHV and NAP. And the other cool thing, which I did not show, or I could not see probably here, this one can go from the ultra high vacuum, 10 to minus 10 milliva. Uh, if you don't leave it a few, they will probably will go better than, lower than 10 to minus 10. And then you can go to the MF pressure measurement. And that will be really within about 20 minutes. It's amazing. So in the, um, yeah, we have very sensitive and analyze, uh, detector over here. And another thing, so we have, there's two types here. There's a, a lab in biometrics called the current system. Lab, this one is for the eight millimeter sample and this in biometrics fab, fabrication. This one for uh, eight to 12 inch. So you can have both. So there are two different systems here, but really this one mainly fab made for the industry, wafer industry, um, uh, like Samsung, LG, I don't know, all the other companies uh, who produce uh, uh, wafers here. And then you can also have an uh, Raman, uh, so IRS or FTIR, there's a, a hole here, you can connect your system directly to here and do the measurement. This is fully automatic, this automates the system, You all what you need, you load your sample into a sample holder and loading dock, and then it's really just a click in the software. It will pull in out, check to the real, right location, measure it. There's also automated charge composition. Um, so now uh, about the here challenge. So there are a lot of challenges in the exit UHV, let's say classical uh, topics here. This is what people normally use, but then we have now uh, other kind of the subjects which really right now more an active uh, in, in let's say in the research market there's liquid there's bio stuff here there's um competitive materials the battery fuels electrochemistry and, 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 and so on here like this stuff all this that here none of them were really possible and 
if you look at this one here, this I just put it in, uh, basic. I found it uh, yesterday somewhere. It's pretty easy. Uh, you see how many publications have been done from this year to here, and every year it's adding more and more here. And if you look at this one, this is where different kind of the experts or and, and spectroscopy are working. Let's say that the ARPAs are working this range area, the typical experts will be here, her experts is here. And looking at this area, we thought, okay, the best thing would be if we add three sources. So you can, the people can pick really, go from typical experts and up to higher. So that's the whole idea about the environmentals, which I have shown you before. There's the, a the nice white system. If you have an aluminum cable, for example, and you have someone like stuck sample like here, and he wants to see all information about the top surface from zero to three nanometer, he can use the aluminum cable. But then he can say, oh, I want a bit deeper here. Then you will see uh, deeper information in addition to the top. But now the sensitivity is low, then you can also... Uh, you, you will also be able to calculate the depth, everything. So if you need more deeper information, let's say here you can go up to uh, 10 nanometer, I've wrote here seven, seven sorry. Uh, you can go with the chromium K alpha up to 10 nanometer. So now uh, if you look at here, this makes a bit clear. It's under different angle. Different angle will be different depth here. Then it goes directly through that here if they are like here. Then you have different depths. The same thing here. This is the uh, penetration, uh, the depth uh, at different energy here. So the metros, I have to see that. Um, it measures also between 20 to 80. It means anything coming out of your sample between 20 to 80 degree uh, can be measured. I mean, you can go from really from top zero up to maximum depth here if you use all the sources here. If you use only aluminum, still you will be able from zero top, let's say this 20 degree until it goes to 90, and then uh, let's say until 60, 70, 80, you are covering a lot. This is mainly like a depth profile measurement. Uh, or if you if you remember, so when people want to see some sensitive information and they try to rotate the manipulator, so the sample goes under several certain angle uh, to the, uh, the analyzer. This is why how you could make it uh, sensitive or less sensitive. So if you are interested in the service uh, experience mapping, um, you can do that. It's up to 10 micron resolution. Uh, that's possible. And if you want higher resolution, there's also SEM, SAM, another kind of the source here. It gives you up to one micrometer uh, mapping, which is really pretty cool here. So then you can have the UPS, you can have the repairs uh, UPS, let's say empty balance bands or connection bands here. You can combine all of this stuff together and you can repeat exactly the same thing and yet under pressure measurement here. So the analyzer there, the, uh, the, the, good, the, the nice thing here, this is, this is even the, not the news analyzer, this is the one with 22 plus minus acceptance angle, 22 degree plus minus acceptance angle. This is um, aluminum K alpha of OG. Uh, this one, as you see here, near ambient pressure measurement analyzer. This is a normal UHV analyzer. And you see the intensity difference from here to here. And that's only because of the, uh, the acceptance angle here is wider. This one is plus minus 15. Here, plus minus 22. Now, imagine we have now plus minus 30. It means it goes way more. That's uh, one improvement here. These are the information about the three X-ray sources, which will be added that aluminum, silver, chrome, different energies, different sources, sizes, peaks, uh, photon intensity. This one being measured also of the silicon 2P3 half. This is the this is the minimum resolution that's been ever measured in the scientific instruments, 0.36, uh, or here, 0.2363. Uh, okay, now next one is the same thing, the count rate, as we said. In We saw that one. So this one, again, measured with the uh, silver L-alpha. Um, 
If it peaks, then this one is uh, not an easy. This is polydium. Um, so I have somewhere. This is not an easy sample. I hear that will it's very reactive. Uh, you cannot do it in the UHV, but still we see the signal. Um, then we have this irrelevant. This is the chromium. We don't need this one now. Uh, here's some applications. This is a zeolite measurement at one millibar air. This is normally not possible with the UHV. And uh, because uh, that's, let's say, a catalyst, you want to have it under that condition here. So now for people, let's say, who want to do a lot of optimization or want to provide service to other people, this is the matrix who looks like it has a different concept, as I said before, this an analyzer. The X-ray source are different, three, three different sources. There are different ion sources for the um, a mapping for an, another kind of the experiments, like uh, here, AES, EPS, this UP experiment, Raman experiment. Uh, you can change the detectors differently. You can have automatic charge compensation. And this is the, um, the conclusion of this system. Like this is all what you can do with the system. Uh, by the way, the uh, the brochure can be downloaded freely from the web page of the Specs company. If you go to the Specs, you will see that here. You can see all the information included here. And that's really your detailed information, what you need. As I said here, plus minus 30 is possible. Here, there's a lot of energy channels here. There's 12 angle. Uh, it means you can have also an angle measurement, like a depth profile measurement, and then destructive, we have to say that. Uh, again, this one, one micron lateral resolution, possible. Then you can have also for sputter profiling, uh, aluminum, uh, here's uh, argon cluster. Then, so the rest are different samples. Uh, yeah, uh, different types here, fab and lab. So, now the, the, the this one is called ESCA, this one, it's mainly focused for the XPS, UPS, and depth profiling here. Yeah, this one has a very quick loading system. It differs from the other one. So you will see that has only one source uh, and limited uh, uh, some stuff, but it's always a trait. Um, there's, you can measure the old UHV NAP condition. This one goes to 5 to 10 to minus 9. The other one will go to 10 to minus 10 millibar. So... UHV. This one you can swap always the sample. Another one you cannot always uh, add so many samples. Let me show you this one and then you will see the difference better. So you can also, uh, it has a pretty small spot size. You can use liquids. You can do some operandum measurements, which is not possible in the other one. This house looks like you remember the side cut of the analyzer I've showed you. Uh, this is pump one, pump two, pump three, uh, the source, uh, the sample loading and so on. This is how it looks like in general. Sorry, and then this is the sample environment. This is here inside this the sample stage, so you can put a sample up to uh, 12 millimeter and a 12 and a 20, 120 something millimeter by uh, something and then four centimeter high, we will see the parameter at the end. And it has a slight door, so it just be pushed here, put your sample in, and this is automatically connected to the top. And this is the only thing will be exposed to the air to the different gases. But the entire system, due to different valves, will be staying in the vacuum. It means your system doesn't need to be baked again and again, whatever you do with the experiment. And for some people who are interested in completely different experiments, they can have different kind of uh, the sample environment. Um, so now, let me see, this is exactly, this is door, this is the sample environment, and that's how it looks like. You take the this one out, it takes you just a few minutes, uh, it's just a click, one click, and there's one one uh, special connector in the here, an ABCR connector. The color will tell us you the condition, ready, not ready, what's the problem, whatever, the gas, uh, there are different colors here. So 
pretty easy one man power uh, management. So these are some different sample holders in the system. The system, uh, you can have, let's say, a standard sample holder like that when you see the old aluminum passive sample holders like in the SEM. You can have your sample here. There are about, let's say, two, six, eight, nine in the middle. And then you can pick different samples, automatically measure different ones. You can have, let's say, if you want some electrical contacts, you can have that one connected to here, to that, to the main one. And then you can replace the main one also. If you want to have the laser heating, if you want to have a button heater, go to 600 degrees Celsius, you can also have a sample plate with Peltier cooling. The Peltier cooling is really nice thing. Something similar to piezo, where you apply the voltage and then the surface, the area here, will be cooled down to five degrees Celsius for the people who are interested in um, adsorption, condensation, something like that. This is a live uh, photo of the laser heating, 1250K. Not possible also with the UHV. This is, you see how quick the temperature raises from the 400 to 1000 degrees Celsius. Uh, it means total you need really a few <clears throat> seconds here. This is the pressure change from <clears throat> the here to there within within uh, within that time here. See from zero to 25 and that how it affects. So the pressure, see the, the temperature didn't affect a lot and nothing, almost zero as you see here, very stable. And still you have that here. This is good for people who want to work very quick and they don't want to have any what's called recondensation of the sample or avoiding contamination here. The software is pretty cool. Uh, you have three different cameras here. There's uh, also that one here. So the, the height of different samples can be aligned automatically. So you will pick a sample, a peak of the sample. This is the cartoon shows you where you are measuring. Uh, you pick a different peak here, and then uh, you play with the height to find the optimum intensity, and that's you will be the walking distance, the ideal walking distance here. And that's our parameter. So uh, you can see the entire system diagram, which from this open off uh, valve, open pressure, and so on like that here. You have the entire the library included, implemented in the software. So it means when you do depth profile measurement, and all the factors and cross-sections, uh, uh, the factors, uh, the density factors and uh, are included in the software. You just need to click to know, say, okay, I want this and this. Or first you can say, you click here, okay, I want to know library, what's this? And you can tell us everything about here. Um, software is really pretty cool. You don't need any external library for that, anything. So you can add an arm for to do automatic measurement, uh, movement, a sample. You can have, for example, a glove box internet and connect to the system. If you do the experiment here, you can have the, uh, the uh, robot arm inside here. You can have the sample storage here, 10, 12, and then click, click, move in, out. So that's possible. If you want to do some, let's say, experiment externally to connect to the uh, Enviro SK, so you can have the active suitcase or passive suitcase. This is the door, you've seen it before. It's the same door here, it's the sample environment. You can connect here to the passive one or your active one, load it and then do the measurement. The same thing here, you see this the ESCA here. This is our demonstration lab. And that's that here, that's pretty nice, pretty easy. It comes also with the uh, microscope up to 10 micrometer. These are the applications. We saw it, this one, you've seen it before. And that's the information. This is about the sample size. What I tried to explain you is about 120 millimeter by 40 by 50 diameter in that one. Or you have that one here. It's pretty cool. This is precision. Okay, we are almost at the end. So the pressure range, it's really is pretty cool. It's working in this range area. You see the energy of the source here. You see the X-ray source here. You've seen it in the in the other one. It's about 100 micron. This is 200 micron. But this one, this system, extra uh, precisely made for the people who want to do, um, let's say, every kind of the in-situ measurements here. They want to do different kind of the samples uh, 
they want also to do a lot of the XPS, UPS. So whereas the other one, uh, you cannot have, let's say, some operandi measurements and you will be limited with the one size 80 by 80 millimeter measurement. Yes, it's, that's also fully automated. It really depends on where you want exactly. This is just to compare both here. It's also possible. That's uh, what I explained, they look very similar. So charge composition, this is how it works. Uh, you see in this page, we don't go through here. This is the measurement from uh, polymer. You see at the UHV that this peak, you don't see anything. And then at one millivolt, you see oxygen carbon, both peaks very clear. Then this is the zeolite. It's also not possible under that condition. Then we have liquid water. This is absolutely not possible. This one, there's some nano silver particle here. In liquid, there's some uh, natrium chloride. This is also possible. You see a different pressure, 4 millibar, 12 millibar. This is never, none of this is possible at the normal UHV experiment. Here, again, different conditions. Occur. Here is also a diapers. They want to study uh, the absorption. <clears throat> they want to study chemical information of the diaper polymer at different uh, vapor pressure here. And then you see how it changed with the time. These are different pressures. How that affecting the chemical compensation there here. Yeah. So again, some pharmaceutical, aspirin, ibuprofen, you can distinguish that as possible. Some medical experiment uh, samples we got from people, uh, companies asking for the stuff. Uh, we have this one here. We have this one's contact lenses. Contact lens normally cannot be measured in the USU because it will crack, but the people have contact lenses in their eyes and there's a liquid, so you have to be studied also the condition, why they cracked, why uh, uh, a lot of other stuff in, in relation to the LRD. And this is also hydrogel effect. So then we have bacteria people, biological, let's say, you want to have bacteria measurement in the environment without changing any uh, in condition of the cell here. So, and then you can follow up with the difference. So this is E. coli, for example. Here you have the different kind of bacteria, one, two. Then you see the uh, com uh, combination of the different peaks in one to other one based on the XPS. Biological sample, again, different areas, hair, human hair. Um, this is untreated hair. This is with conditioner. You see how much that affects to on the human hair. There's tomato from different region. Different region, different shifting, as you see here. It's pretty cool, funny thing here. Uh, imagine you can have a tomato from a different state in the Australia. You can uh, have a fingerprint like the DNA of human being can be measured. Again, uh, this is apple. The peeling from the inner side, and you see there is no nitrogen from in the peeling. Uh, the fresh doesn't, um, the fresh one as to the peeling, the other one. Again, the apple, there's the corrosion of the metal. You see the difference uh, of clean or corroded after 12 hours life in the experiment. This is the life measurement. You can just move closer here and you see the bubbles coming up. It's really the entire condition is there of the corrosion. It's a pretty nice thing. And then again, here after two hours uh, corrosion, uh, nine millibar, and here is three hours, one millibar. You can see the effect here. Again, some battery research experiment. This is a um, sample battery, so you can have your electrodes in, in replaced with this stuff here. It's three ways battery. You can add whatever you want, parameter, one, two, three, four, and then you can measure your battery life here. Uh, this is, again, the three-way electrode measurement, latin corrosion, etching. Then we have... Uh, Again, vanadium dioxide, different pressure, different temperature as possible. Again, this one for the characterization of electronic companies. And then, uh, so you can download all of these papers, applications on our webpage. You go here, and this is for free. In case you have questions, you will let us know. You can do sputtering, as we said. You can, this will be my last page. Uh, you can follow up, uh, you can base on the sputtering, uh, back sputter, back scatter. This the stuck sample here. You can see with the time you are sputtering after seven minutes, and then with the time you will see which elements are there appearing here, and then based on on the time and some factors, you can you will know 
the thickness of this area, thickness to that one, that one here. And just an example here, you will see at the end, after sputtering 60 minutes, or let's say 18 minutes, you will see a lot of silicon, because silicon is the base uh, sample plate here. And then you see the oxygen from oxide there, and then the rest is really vanishing to the zero after 60 minutes. It means after 60 minutes, you clean everything here. So this is the, the end, my sample software. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dila, for, for your nice presentation now. Thank you.